Have you ever wondered how to make the most of LinkedIn? I sure have. That's why I'm so excited for today's episode. I'm interviewing Krista Molian about LinkedIn organic growth strategies. She's built her business on LinkedIn, and she's going to share with us how she did that today. Krista is a seasoned Silicon Valley tech entrepreneur, a business coach, a LinkedIn micro-influencer, and the founder of the Business Academy, where she develops blueprint programs to teach students how to gain influence using methods that helped her build a successful eight-figure agency and then grow over 67,000 followers and make over seven figures in sales on LinkedIn. Before going into business coaching and consulting, Krista built one of the leading experiential marketing agencies in San Francisco, specializing in 3D and virtual reality and working with leading brands such as Apple, Samsung, and Google. Welcome, Krista. I am so excited to have you here today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited too. <laughs> awesome. So you are coming from a background with over 20 years of experience in Silicon Valley. I would love to hear a little bit about that. Well, it's a very competitive market full of very ambitious, smart people. And they're all concentrated within 50 miles of each other. So talk about pressure and talk about overwhelm and also, the competitiveness to get ahead is, is very difficult, but it's also so rewarding because in my career, I was able to meet people professionally and privately who are doing amazing things, developing leading, cutting edge products, innovative. And I basically grew up in such an environment of innovation and advanced tech and so now when I work with people outside of Silicon Valley, sometimes I have had some adjusting to do because I realized, number one, that not everyone knows as much tech as I do because it was just the environment I was in. And number two, uh, people aren't maybe as ambitious as where I'm from. So and that's OK. So I've kind of said now you can adjust it to whatever level you're looking for. Like, what does ambition really look like to you? What are your ultimate goals? And that might not be as high as the standards where I was from, but that's fully okay. And it's actually refreshing, by the way, to see that. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. I, it, it sounds like it's pretty cutthroat in Silicon Valley. Is that true? Yeah, it is. And it's even harder to be a woman. So I, I experienced a lot of sexism and just in general competitiveness among women, mm. especially as a mother. So being a mother is never easy, but try being a mother when you're in a workaholic environment where people are expected to be online all the time or on chat or on camera when they're not in the office or answer emails over the weekend or have very tight deadlines. Uh, so that's the type of environment that I'm used to. And I think that it had some, some advantages for me because it told me how I would want to do things differently on my own and what I didn't like. So it's always easier when you're faced with something you don't like to reassert your own values and number two, it taught me to be very organized to the point where I have a course called How to Be Mega Productive. Um, and, and again, this was another standards issue where I just assumed everyone else was very organized. And when I started working with people, I'm like, what do you mean you don't have time? For me, that just didn't make any sense because I always fit in my work around four kids. And here mm. I was dealing with people who either had one or two kids or no kids who were like, I didn't have time this week. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to it. Or I don't know how I'm supposed to accomplish that. And it took me a while to, I asked a lot of questions and I, I tried things with them. And that's where I developed a course because I said, then henceforth, I could just give this to my clients when I coach people and say, here, you have access. It's part of the deal. Um, there's worksheets, there's book recommendations, there's a ton of technology that can simplify your life. Like I'm a big fan of automation um, mm -hmm. for productivity. 
but again, coming from this cutthroat environment, it forced me to learn those things because otherwise, how was I going to get by? How was I going to find time to raise my kids, do my work, and also find some kind of personal time for me if I wasn't super organized? So (laughs) it seems like so often what we're good at either naturally or what we develop the skills to become good at, we assume everyone else knows or is good at themselves. And I think especially women, we don't give ourselves credit for those things. And in business, we may not charge what we're worth to teach or consult or coach on those things when other people really need it. So like you just said, your experience with your clients, not being able to manage their time, not having systems in place. It's wonderful that you created that course. And I think it's very cool that you give that away as a bonus to your clients. And I hope you sell it separately too (laughs) to people who aren't clients. I do, but I've made it really affordable because again, two reasons probably because of what you said, because for me, it's so obvious. It's almost ridiculous that I would charge for it. But on the other hand, I've really developed like step-by-step, like I think there's six video modules in there. Um, Everything's professionally done. There's worksheets at every stage. There's a whole book list. Um, There's a community attached to it. So you can ask questions. I have a live uh, coaching Q and a every month that anyone who's purchased any of my courses or is a former or existing client can come to. So it's open to everybody. Um, So, you know, I'm pretty generous with, with those things because I just want everyone to never have to think that that's an excuse not to accomplish their dreams. Something so almost ridiculous as I have problems finding time to do that. Well, life is short. You, we have to figure that out. Don't we? There, nothing is waiting for us. So, Either we are doing too much and we need to step back and say, am I really trying to accomplish too much too soon, which is often a problem, or am I letting other people be the CEO of my life? Meaning mm. even, even your, your kids, by the way, as a mother, um, you know, so it's not just a boss. It's always easy to blame it on a boss, but sometimes I see especially women doing it to themselves where they think that they need to be at the beck and call of their kids. And it's a guilt thing. It's like being a good mom means being selfless. And I'm like, no, Um, my kids have to do chores. Um, You know, I have a do not call thing. So I'm just like you, if I'm working, they know that they're not supposed to bother me. And I've made them very independent from a very early age because First of all, I knew that they were going to leave me someday, you know, hopefully, because mm-hmm. because nowadays right. with the <laughs> some of the horror stories I hear, like the 40 year old living with his parents and never securing a job. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my gosh. Or I also knew they would need to as soon as they hit college and were living on their own, they would need to be organized. So I wanted them to know how to cook a meal, do their own laundry, prepare their own things. And did that make me a worse off mother since I didn't always do it for them? That's questionable, right? We could have a, we could hash it out among mothers. Who's the better mother. But I think that self-sacrifice is, is actually a sign of insecurity. It's not love. I think you can love, but I think that loving means also teaching your kids independent skills, right? I mean, look at kids nowadays don't have a lot of those skills. So without, side segueing into another topic here on your podcast. Um, you know, being organized is, is a good topic to talk about LinkedIn because that's the very first point that I want to tell your audience when you're ready, (laughs) we can Mm -hmm. talk about, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it, it, but it's kind of goes back to a bigger life philosophy that I have in my personal and private life and in my relationships, as well as my, my work is you're in charge. You're the CEO of you. And we have to stop uh, diffusing that and saying, well, I can 
defer blame onto other people or circumstances. Because ultimately, when I hear people say, well, I don't have enough time, a lot of the times I'll see them taking phone calls. I'm like, why are you picking up your phone? Oh, well, my mother just called. She wants to know where I buy the this one product. And I'm like, can so, wait. <laughs> I'm like, this is what you do in the middle of your work day or no, this isn't OK. Or your husband calls. Oh, I can't find this. Well, I, I can't find something for the kids. I'm like, well, have him figure it out. Have him figure it out. Like, just like with your kids, you have to train your spouse as well not to bother you uh, and your parents and your siblings and maybe mm -hmm. your best friend who wants to tell you the latest update because everything that you put in your head there's been studies that have shown that your subconscious continues thinking about those things and it takes you so much more time to get back into what you were focused on before the interruption. So every time we stop mm -hmm. to take a phone call or respond to a message, we'll say, well, this will just be real quick. Like, oh, my husband just wants to know this. And what does that do? A lot of times he said, I need to find something for a trip that we're going to go on next week. What happens next? Do you think you're going to go back to thinking about your work? You're going to start thinking about that trip. And then you're like, oh, I forgot. I'm going to call him back now because I'm going to tell him what he needs to do. Or I need to, I need to call the travel agent. Or so, And then pretty soon a whole half an hour or even an hour has been lost. Yeah. So don't, don't wing it. And this has to be in your, pri in your, in your business life too. Um, with what you're doing, you have to think, what do I want to obtain now? And how much time can I dedicate to it? So I'm big on time blocking. Um, so when we talk about LinkedIn, this is mm -hmm. very, very important because I see the same bad habits happening. Um, online as well, where people are spending way too much time with, and it's kind of a pointless circle without an end, without a goal. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a big problem. Everything you do should be like, okay, I've got 30 minutes. What do I want to accomplish in these 30 minutes? And it should all be booked yeah. into your schedule so you can get in and out. Excellent points. Yeah, we hadn't planned on talking about this at all, but this is just excellent. Yeah, setting up that system. Time blocking is fabulous. And not just time blocking, but turning off your notifications, shutting down email so you don't get a little email popping up in the top right of your computer. I've got all things Apple. So I set my phone notifications off and it affects my iPad, my computer, everything. And so texts don't come through, calls don't come through. So I don't get distracted during, you know, particular things that I really have to focus on. So I don't go off and check anything, no social media during those times, because you're so right. If something distracts me, you know, my mom may text me about some silly little thing or ex-husband, something about our son. It's like, but you know, our son is with me, so it's not an emergency, you know, right. it's just some mm -hmm. question. Yeah. It's like, I don't need to focus on that right now. And when I, before I put these practices into place, you were so right. It took me so long to get back into the flow that I was in. And I'm talking like real flow, you know, where you are so focused, you lose track of time, you are doing best work possible. And that Absolutely. is not easy to achieve. I have a whole podcast about that from a month or two ago. So y'all can check that out about getting into flow. And it's, it's precious. That time is precious. Absolutely. And also when you do certain types of tasks is super important. So in my productivity course, um, I talk about social media being a time suck. And again, we have to set the goal. What do we want to get out of LinkedIn? Why are we going on to LinkedIn? And people tend to blur the lines. Like they go on there thinking, well, I need to go to LinkedIn because I'm a B2B service provider. I need to look for clients there. But then they end up getting sucked into regular social media consumption and I'm like, no, let's, so what I like to do, and that's what I'll tell your audience now is I like to have a little checklist. Um, mm. And remember, just like any new habit, once you're able to do these steps over and over a couple of times, 
you don't need the checklist anymore, right? We don't need a checklist to know our morning routine that we need to brush our teeth. We go make the coffee. We do, we could do it with our eyes closed. But at first, when you're doing something new, it's very helpful to be like, which step did I forget? And so with LinkedIn, this is how I operate as well, where I say we have these steps that we want to get through, right? Right. Before you get into the steps, let me ask you, why did you start using LinkedIn? I mean, it is so rare that anyone talking about social media strategies talks about LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Normally, you know, we hear about Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and now people are talking more about TikTok. But it's a really niche thing for someone to talk about LinkedIn. Totally. So how did you start <laughs> using it? All right. So when I, uh, my background is that I worked in Silicon Valley and I, I built a virtual reality agency with two partners, which I ran for over 12 years. Um, and then I got burnt out and I left and I took a sabbatical. I worked with a life coach, a therapist. I got a divorce. I mean, these were turbulent times. Okay. And my next phase of my life looked very um, up in the air. So I really was trying to listen to my heart, listen to my intuition, and then take my skills and go back into the workforce, find what was, what was I going to do next? Um, and what I end up doing is hiring a career coach because my first intuition was I'm going to find a position in marketing and the career coach, what is the first thing they told me to do? go to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the place to be. Um, I, I'm sorry. I have to go get my daughter really quick. I'm right back. Oh, no problem. Absolutely. I'm sorry about that. My daughter no is problem. a toddler, so it's really hard for her to understand. Wait a moment because talking about time, right? When you have kids, uh, they go from either needing you every waking moment to never wanting to speak to you. You're like, are you okay? Like, how are, how was your day? And they just look at you like, what? They, so teenagers and toddlers <laughs> are day and night, day and night. Uh, right. <laughs> so, so getting back into how I ended up going over to LinkedIn, it was because I originally thought I was going to go after a marketing executive position. And so I, I learned how to use LinkedIn uh, with a product called Sales Navigator, which I highly recommend for business development. So it's a very amazing tool when you're when you have defined what kind of clients you're going to go after. And you can use it as a research tool. You can use it as a CRM tool to gather up uh, and store and create lists of different types of clients or different criteria. And lastly, you can use it as an outreach tool. So with, link, with LinkedIn Sales Navigator, you can directly uh, send a bunch of messages. There's a lot of in-mails included. And so I started using that tool and building up relationships, looking for this position. And over the course of maybe six to nine months, I became really active on LinkedIn. And uh, during that time, I updated my resume. I was doing outreach all the time. And I got a lot of interviews, but out of that, <clears throat> I kept hearing that I wasn't quite right for the role. Uh, and some of the informal feedback I was hearing was you're too outspoken or we're concerned that you're an entrepreneur. You've been an, un you've been an entrepreneur this whole time. And that's not quite the person we're looking for. And one after another, all the roles that I interviewed with, I tracked. I set up notifications to see who they hired. So guys, if you're ever in this position, if you really want to know what they were looking for that they didn't want to tell you, do that because the facts are the fact. And consistently, they always hired someone at least 10 years junior to me for these high-end roles who had never been an entrepreneur. So it was like stepping stone, like a major stepping stone for them. But they were, you know... They had a consistent track record of being in, in different companies, similar companies, and then progressively being uh, promoted, right? So I was the black sheep mm -hmm. and I found that it just wasn't working for me. 
And so I realized, well, it looks like it's my destiny to be an entrepreneur because I'm too outspoken. I'm too wild. They're, they're afraid they won't be able to, I'm not manageable. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, and, and also I want too much money because after being an entrepreneur, I, I actually laughed the first time that they made me an offer because uh, one of the jobs I was like, are you joking? Like, this is what I made like my second year of entrepreneur being an entrepreneur. And I'm like in my 14th year now, like I, I can make 20 times more. And so I basically gave up on the idea of going back to work. <laughs> um, and then I said, OK, well, I've, I've built this great network on LinkedIn. What do I do next? Mm -hmm. And so I, so I did, I kept doing what I was doing, but I shifted gears towards, uh, positioning myself as a consultant. So instead of saying, Hey, I'm looking to be hired in a full-time role at your company, I kept doing the same outreach strategy, but positioned myself. So I opened an LLC, I set up an LLC and I actually changed it since then. My first LLC that I did back then was, um, <clears throat> was purely doing product marketing consulting and, and I had a whole website that was all geared towards more technical roles, technical skills, which I have, but now I've switched over. I don't need them, um, yeah. as a coach, but so, so, you know, my advice to your audience is LinkedIn is an amazing place. If you're looking for B2B clients mm -hmm. in whatever capacity on LinkedIn, people are in a money mindset. We're all there mm -hmm. for business. Whereas when I go to Facebook, I'm there to find out what my great aunt Elma uh, did for her 50th anniversary, or I'm, I'm, I'm relaxing on Facebook, right? Um, Instagram, I'm there just to lurk on food photos and fitness videos, right? So I'm looking for photos and reels that entertain me. On uh, YouTube, I'm there for information. So YouTube is a, is a great place to find business as well. But it depends again, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a bit older, right? So if I ask like my 20 year old son, what do you do on YouTube? It's going to be very different, right? Uh, right? So think about, think about where is your ideal client based on their age group? And then what mindset are they in? Like, why did they come to TikTok? Mm -hmm. Are they on TikTok because they want to hire you? Probably not. Yeah. So TikTok is actually now very popular. Uh, growing popularity with entrepreneurs. But to be honest, I see some downfall compared to LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, I can make a lot more money uh, faster with less effort. Mm. Doesn't that sound better? Uh, yes, it does. So, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. L TikTok, you need to make a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by a lot of effort is you're going to have to dance in front of the camera or speak in front of the camera, edit those videos. You're going to have to do that over and over and over again, uh, probably six times a week. And I don't know about you, but those TikTok videos are kind of exhausting to me. You have to be in the right mood, the right mindset. You have to come up with an interesting story and it has to be short, which is hard for me because I'm like a, I'm a writer. I, I like articles. I, I, I'm an intellectual. I like books. So to say something in 30 yes. seconds and dumb it down takes a lot more effort to me than to write a, a six page article about it. Right. Um, so yes. TikTok is exhausting, but it's also very, very time consuming. If you want to succeed there, I have friends who are entrepreneurs who have succeeded on TikTok, but that's all they do. They mm -hmm. don't, they don't, they really went all in on TikTok. Um, and behind the scenes, not only are they making those videos every single day, but behind the scenes, they're doing outreach like crazy and engagement like crazy. So they mm -hmm. spend all their time on TikTok, which I don't like the platform very much. So to spend my time on a platform that I'm not actually enjoying what I'm seeing isn't very pleasant. So my, mm -hmm. my advice to you all is I'm telling you about LinkedIn today, but before you even decide where you should go, think about number one, is your audience there? Number two, how much effort are you going to have to make to learn the platform and, and succeed there, right? Are we talking about three hours a week? That's what I spent on LinkedIn, three hours total. All right. Because I'm very That's disciplined. <laughs> are you kidding mm -hmm. me? I, I don't like people think I'm all the time on LinkedIn. And the reason is because I've developed this very short in and out system. And this is what I teach people. So 
I really don't want you to spend hours on any platform, but I want you to get out of it what you should be doing. And there's very specific things you should be doing on LinkedIn. Um, so number one, figure out who your audience is and be very specific, the ideal customer avatar. And don't be afraid to niche down even further because people mostly make the mistake of saying, well, I serve anyone who wants to write a book or I serve no. anyone who wants to lose weight. And you know, I work with tons of coaches and I hear it all the time. I heard, I serve anyone who needs project management. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. No. So, and, and here's how I justify this. You're only one person. So unless you have a large team of people who can be nurturing millions of potential leads, you don't need to be friends with everybody. So physically, you don't have enough time. You don't have enough bandwidth to deal with everybody, right? So it's much easier to say, I am helping women over 40 who have premenopausal hormonal issues to deal with weight loss. So they struggle more than usual, but they're also busy women. So they don't have time and they, they don't really, they've tried a lot of things. So they're highly informed. I don't have to tell mm -hmm. them to eat what to eat because they've heard, they've tried every diet. We can jump right into, I know you, this hasn't worked in the past. I feel you. And I know you just want finally to believe that there's a solution for you. So your messaging will get better. You'll spend less time because you won't have to be serving so many people. So, so if you know who your audience is, then on LinkedIn, you have all the tools. Everybody's on LinkedIn, right? So what you do is you start developing your messaging towards that audience. You start using the hashtags. Then you put together a content system where what I like to teach people, because I teach content strategy, write down their five biggest problems, what they struggle with. And mm -hmm. how do you know that? Well, usually your best ICA is a former version of yourself. So you mm -hmm. remember what it was like. Also, hopefully you're doing some one-on-one -on -one work with people. And if you're just starting out, do it for free. Go into a Facebook group. Yeah and say, I'm looking for five women who are, are over 40, who've tried everything and just can't lose the weight and are struggling on top of it with metabolism, hormonal problems. Um, and you'll get people and you'll say, I'm putting together a, a six week program for free in exchange mm -hmm. for feedback, testimonials, and most importantly, to study all your problems, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one second. Sorry, guys. I'll cut that. No problem. I'll cut out. <laughs> that was part. loud. That was loud. Um, so getting back to what I've told you guys about LinkedIn is once you've got your ideal customer content strategy, you, you're going to write down the pain points. And what I like to do is I like to do all my content for the whole month in 90 minutes. So what we do is mm. we do this massive, intense, let's just jam this out. And because you know your target audience so well, you're not going to hesitate anymore. You're not going to say, I really don't know what to say to them. I really don't know. Well, then you've probably not nailed down your target audience. Because if you, if you know, I work with people all day long. That's what propels me to make courses. Because if I see at least five to 10 people who keep telling me the exact same problem, I make a note. I have a a creative dumping file. And I say, I better do a workshop about this. I better see if there's enough interest. So I always start with three workshops. I do the same workshop three times. During the workshop, I ask for input. We have a FAQ. So I'm, I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. Here's all the questions. Uh, here's the, the, the things I didn't think of when I wrote the workshop curriculum. Mm. By the third time, I've got it down. By the third time, it's gold. Mm -hmm. And then I also poll people and I say, okay, any feedback do you have about this course? What else would you have liked to learn? And then I launch it as a, as a course, but it's, mm -hmm. it's by then it's That's really, great. really proven. So, but my point mm -hmm. is when you write content like that, or you put out content like that, you have unlimited source of content. You'll never run out of ideas. And in 90 minutes, if we're focused, we can put down uh, so we, we decide, so how many times per week are you going to post? Again, you, you don't have to be on LinkedIn every single day. 
Uh, so, you know, let's say that you're really active. You're like, I'm going to post five days a week. That's very active, right? Yeah. Well, th- then we need, uh, we need five times four, right? So we have to sit down and we have to write down, what are you going to write about? Then we have to turn it into different formats. So mm. we've got all these beautiful ideas and we say, well, I'm not just going to do a long form post five days a week, every, every day. Right. So I'm like, what can we do a quick video about? What can we do a carousel post about? What should we turn into, um, you know, maybe a full blown, uh, event. Like I do free events on LinkedIn Mm. all the time. I'm having one later today, Mm. um, an audio event. And then on Fridays I I do a place on LinkedIn or yes. Yes. Uh, you can do. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. Very cool. And LinkedIn now has creator, creator feature, which is available to everybody. Ooh. And this is wow. very, very cool because what that means is you can create your own newsletter right now. Uh, so like I said, let's put out 20 ideas for that's all you need. And we've got it down in 90 mm-hmm. minutes. We've got your ideas down and we've put down, I have a spreadsheet for this. So we've got the name of the topic you're going to write about, or you're going to produce content about We've got the format you've picked. So you might say, I want to do an audio event about this one. Or I want to do a newsletter about this one because the newsletter has longevity. So this is a big topic. Mm -hmm. I want people to associate like with me, right? Um, And so, and I might come in and and tell you if we were working together, I might say, well, I don't think that that's, I think that's a really important topic. So let's make it a newsletter because you were going to do something else. But I think Mm -hmm. a post is gone, right? Post is uh, and that's it. In 90 minutes, we got your content. Um, and then I teach strategies, when to post, uh, hashtags. I teach little tricks to get boost. And LinkedIn isn't that hard compared to other platforms. I'll be honest. I have a very, I think it's very easy, uh, but it is a machine, right? An algorithm is a machine. It's, it's very black and white. So if you respect right. the algorithm, it will serve you. If you try to ignore it, you're going to lose. So yeah. the best content, if you don't follow certain rules about this, um, if you're just like, oh, I just felt like I was stressed. So I just decided to post in the middle of the night or I post back to back two posts or I shared a post. LinkedIn hates when you share stuff, which is actually counterintuitive, right? You would, yeah. you would think, Hey, I want to share things. no, what you're going to do is you're going to actually um, do a little write up and then you're going to say the link to this mm-hmm. article, if you're interested, is in the comments and you can even screenshot Ooh. the content you want to share. Or if it's your own content, you create a snippet. Like if we're doing this podcast and I want to share, I want to share the podcast that you did about us. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask mm-hmm. you for a graphic or a snippet mm-hmm. or something. And I'm going to actually attach it like a, as if it was my own post. So I'm going to say, I'm going to upload image or upload video file. I'm going to do the write up and then I'm going to say the whole podcast, listen to the whole podcast here. And I'm going to put yeah. it in the first comment. But if yes. I just took your post and shared it, it will get no views. Not wow. because your podcast oh, is bad because right. I know the algorithm. Yeah. So, so that that's probably a good, a good summary is whenever you guys want to succeed on any platform, and you you really make a decision. Like I want to be a podcaster. I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a blogger, right? Hire an expert. So we're, we're talking about investment in yourself. Would you guys go out and teach yourselves how to drive a car? You know, no, right. It's dangerous. It's a machine. The algorithm is a machine. So if you're going to go yeah. and you're, you, you need to learn TikTok. I have a TikTok coach, a friend of mine, who's a, a TikTok coach. Uh, there's definitely a coach for everybody. There's courses for everyone. It, you know, you, mm-hmm. I, I'm not trying to promote one over the other. I'm just promoting in general to please take the time mm-hmm. to learn what you're doing because it's so sad to me to see people posting for sometimes months at a time and then telling me, oh, I tried LinkedIn. It didn't work for me. Yeah. And I'm like, so did you, did you get a training? Like was, tell me. Oh no, I just, you know, I just went on there and started posting and I didn't get any likes. I'm like, oh, so this is really a strategy in your mind. Right. No, no. <laughs> and this, this applies to any platform, right? Yeah. Try, try it on any platform. You will fail unless you take some 
unethical steps, which we're not mm-hmm. even going to go there, like pods or sexuality. Like, you know, there's certain things that people do to game the algorithm uh, or yeah. buying followers. Mm. So we, we're not even going to go there. We're talking about how to succeed the right way on any platform, right? Um, but right. the truth is I've made a lot of business there. So about 70% of my revenue since I went into full-time on coaching comes from LinkedIn leads. And not only that, wow. <clears throat> most of them are inbound and that's amazing, wow. which means, yes. you know, there's a lot of coaches, high ticket sales coaches who are telling you to just keep calling, like make calls all the time. They're, they're giving you scripts and they're saying you have to cold email everybody. Mm. And I don't think so. I use my content combined with knowing my ICA really, really well. It's like I'm, whenever I produce content for my ideal customer, it's like I'm writing to my, my best friend. So it it comes across, people will see that it's authentic and they will Mm -hmm. be like, wow, she's in my head. That's Mm -hmm. the best thing you want your clients to say is like, I read your post and I had to reach out and I was too embarrassed to leave a comment. I didn't want, you know, my boss to see that I really want to get out of the job. I want to start a business. How do I set up a call? You know, so inbound is very, very powerful. And I think even more so nowadays because people don't want spam anymore. And we're getting smarter. We have spam right. filters, like your email, right? We have we have tools that will block your calls and block your email. So you better get good at content because if you can deal with content, mm-hmm. people are just going to come towards you. And not only that, they're going to thank you. They're going to say, like a podcast, I've been listening to your podcast for several months. I really love it. And mm-hmm. I'm even embarrassed to say that I'm only reaching out now. Like I, I should have reached out a long time ago because, you know, now I'm thinking about writing a book or losing the weight or starting a business or, you know, um, so that's why, that's how I teach LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sounds amazing. And, and you're so right. The getting, developing a strategy for any social media platform mm-hmm. and that's right. you, there just seems to be a dearth of LinkedIn strategy training out there. I'm, you know, I know that they exist, but I don't have a good strategy. I post twice a week when I share my podcasts and that's it. I've looked up the best time supposedly to post and that's it. So I am not doing it right at all. Okay. So that, that's, that brings me to another point is uh, unlike other platforms, LinkedIn doesn't really like schedulers. So I actually prefer. Well, that's how to... I post mine yeah. through a scheduler. <laughs> no. So I, I, I hate to say it, but um, especially lately in the past six months, they've started really cracking down on unauthorized access to your LinkedIn and they've been restricting people. And it turns out these people weren't doing anything wrong. They just were using schedulers. But LinkedIn oh sees gosh. it as an extra IP address and they'll restrict your account for it. And <gasps> so I just, here's my thing. I told you I produce all my content once a month, then I'm yeah. done. In fact, right now I'm on June because I got on a roll. I was super productive this month. Mm. So in April, yeah. I was able to put out everything through June. All right. Um, and, but what I actually do is I, I go in and post it. And for me, it's pretty much mm-hmm. a copy and paste. I have a full, I, I use, uh, I use Trello and it's like, in, like, mm-hmm. here's my ideas folder. Here's my draft folder. And here's my ready mm-hmm. for publish folder. And then I have a separate fourth folder for graphics. So it's like, here's mm-hmm. the files. And sometimes in that folder, there's just links. Like if it's a big video file, I have it on a separate storage, but I'll, I'll, I'll say, this is the video that goes with this post. So my system is pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't have to have trouble. You can do the same in Google drive or even your hard drive. Um, but the idea is just set up a system and then it's really easy to post. You just have to know when you're planning on posting. Um, and be ha- give some grace to yourself. So like, for example, 
Yesterday was Easter. We're recording this and we had an Easter weekend. I skipped my newsletter. I decided not to publish it because my newsletter has a lot of events that are happening, a lot of, and I just said, you know what? On Easter, it's, it's not the time to send those things. So, Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's not me just being flaky. It's on purpose sometimes where, Mm -hmm. um, or, or it's, and it's okay to take a break. So it's okay to say, the only thing I like to do is I like to announce it. So I'm like, I'm going to be offline for a while. And I set up in LinkedIn, Mm -hmm. you can set up an auto responder. So someone DMs you, you let them know, hey, I'm out for the month of June or I'm on vacation. Mm -hmm. If you need to reach me urgently, here's my email or whatever. Leave a message. I'll be back. Right. That's so cool. I had no idea. Yeah. Can you pre-schedule your posts through LinkedIn? Not at this time. You can't. All right. So if you I can't. want to post something on Tuesday at 10 a.m., I have to be there Tuesday at 10 a.m. to post. Yes. Yes. Okay. And you can you can use schedulers. It's just they it's don't not like it. it's not as good. It's not. Okay. And I, unfortunately, right? I, I hope maybe LinkedIn will change this. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of a hit or miss because I I talk a lot with other social media managers and. Some of them are like, yeah, my, my client, their account was restricted. I don't know why, mm. <laughs> but I'm talking to LinkedIn. All and right. They, really good to know. Um, and, but the main thing you want to do, and this is my hack that I didn't mention earlier. Um, I know this is a lot of information, but this is a really good hack. The hack is don't post and run. So when I said that I'm in and out, mm-hmm. here's how you want to do it. You first go in a first time. And you engage on the potential clients or people who are in your world uh, who have influence. So I always look for people who have the same following as me or bigger because they have more influence. So it is like a big fish, little fish, right? So I'm looking for the big fish who talk about entrepreneurship and I will engage on their posts. And I'm not engaging in a superficial way like, oh, I'm just going to randomly find somebody. I actually have a list of names of the people who I know I really like their content. And I know personally, I want to support them because I never support bad people. I never support people who are influential, but don't deserve it. In fact, I ignore them uh, because I don't want to give them any extra exposure. Right. Um, So go in and like their posts Mm -hmm. of those people, like look up those people and, and leave a thoughtful comment on a couple because what that does is it triggers the LinkedIn algorithm that you're engaging and then post Mm. and your, your post will go much further. Um, And then the second hack is after you post, come back in an hour to just quickly. And this is a really quick thing. Just look who commented. And I do this. I don't do it right away, but within an hour, I try to like make sure when I post, I have the time Uh, I come Mm. back and I check to thank people for their comments. Because again, LinkedIn algorithm, if you come back 24 hours later, Mm. and that's another reason why I don't like schedulers because it's so inconvenient. Like if it's posted without you, uh, uh, do you want to come say hi? Do you want to come say hi? Come here, Ivy. It's okay. Hi. Come here. (laughs) <laughs> Hello. Oh, Ivy! Do you say hi? Welcome to the nice. podcast. <laughs> oh, she's trying to How be a are cat. You? Are you a cat? You're a cat, <laughs> aren't you? Ah! Thank you. Bring, where's Lucky? You're today's oh, podcat. <laughs> <laughs> he he hides from her. Um, yeah. Aww. So LinkedIn LinkedIn algorithm will know. Uh, so those are my three hacks: is come in and engage with people first then post and then engage with your own comments. And a lot of people don't do that. They just post and run. And then they wonder why they're not getting enough out of LinkedIn. That's an algorithm thing. Yeah. And it makes a huge difference. That makes total sense. Awesome. (laughs) This is so good. Thank you so much. I mean, everything you you. share is just fabulous. (laughs) I have got things I need to learn for sure because it sounds like I could do well on LinkedIn 
or, you know, I may need to be there. So turn on creator mode because you'll get extra benefits. You'll get analytics tools so that you can't see if you don't have it on. You'll get the possibility to start a newsletter, Mm -hmm. which you should do right now. Uh, Very powerful. And you'll you'll get LinkedIn live, LinkedIn audio. Uh, Sorry. LinkedIn audio is still Mm -hmm. in beta. So I got into the beta group. Okay. But it's coming. Cool. So soon soon it will be like okay. Twitter spaces where you can host events, uh, audio. So for wow. everybody. Yeah. It's amazing. I had no idea. No idea. This is really great. Well, people on Thank LinkedIn you. are making money, right? They're they're there. Yes. They're 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 looking for if I'm gonna look for a book coach, a health coach, um, a business consultant, a strategist, I'm gonna be doing it on LinkedIn because yeah. it's a it's a directory with names and titles and I can see your whole portfolio. I mean, yeah. Facebook, it's a lot harder right. to find things. It's not designed for that. Right. So I don't remember that hire anyone on Facebook. No, ever. Uh, and also yeah. you can see people's referrals. Uh, so right away you can mm. see on their profile, what, what reviews they have. So if I see someone who has so many reviews, I'm thinking, wow, that's, that's definitely a point. Yeah. Um, I'm too. So please consider LinkedIn. And if you need any help, reach out to me. You'll have all my data that you can. Uh, and I also have, I also want to mention one last thing is I have a free LinkedIn five day challenge. Awesome. Um, well, can, they, can they find that on your website? Christmolion.com? Yes. Christmolion.com slash five day challenge. And I'll send you the link. I think I put it in the links awesome. that I sent you, but I, Great. If you're just if you're just trying to get started, it's free. Why not take it? And yeah. what it is is it. I did it live a couple of times, and then I turned it evergreen. So now, mm. when you if you sign up, you'll get five days worth of a worksheet per day with a very specific exercise, like a homework exercise, and a video that goes with it. And I also mm. do during the five days. I have some videos of live teardowns where I'm like. Uh, coaching people live. So, wow. You know, why not? Yeah, that sounds fabulous. Perfect. <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you so much, Krista. This is fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, I would love to read y'all's comments on this episode. You can find it at AngelaKellysmith.com forward slash podcast, depending on when you're looking for it. It may be right at the top or just search for it. (laughs) Uh, Search for Krista Mullion at the search feature. And if you are looking to start your own podcast, check out the Women Podcasters Academy at WomenPodcastersAcademy.com. I will be back next week with another guest interview. So come back and check that out. Thanks so much for being here. See you next time.